We'll do a song entitled Maile Swing, composed by uh, John Kamealoha Almeida. And if you're uh, playing along on the radio, it's in the key of D. Let's do this. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Sweet and lovely ke o na o na o ka mai le Ho o i po ke a la ho o hen no shu a i ka pili poli Na ne a e vale a e luana ka ua i la i la Mi ki o e ke ki na he ko hu hai ka pa li li Na ni ua ko ka i I wanted to ask, is it a particular Hawaiian style of music where uh, when playing the ukulele, often the male vocalist is singing in falsetto? Yes, it's... um. It's called Leo Kie Kie in Hawaiian, and it's uh, it actually started when the f- first missionaries came to Hawaii, and the men were actually instructed to sing all of the parts. So they had so to sing the female soprano, parts, yeah, right? Alto and soprano, and it, I guess, over time, it's become a tradition, and you just get in there and make some noise until you make the right one. <laughs> yeah, I don't make the right one. That's why I let him sing falsetto. Nani ua ko ka ini i ho pili mau o e no u ko i i ke aloha e no velo e uleu e hene vai olu alo ko hei hei ka ina ka buana ke o na o na o ka mai la. A lot of times what we, we try and share when we teach is like the way we we learned it. You know, growing up for me, there was no YouTube or any anything like that. So we had to really, you know, we see it, we hear it, and we have to copy it, you know. Um, so it's kind of like passing down the traditions, listening to our parents, our uncles, our aunts, or going to performances of artists that we enjoyed. And then, you know, we'd study hard <laughs> and then go home and try and emulate, you know. that For us, uh, it developed a sense of listening skill, whereas the younger generation or the newer generations, you know, they need that sheet of music in front of them where we don't really. So that's what we try and share. So when we do that, we literally see those aha moments where the light bulbs are going off instead of, yo, I can do this. I don't need the the... the music in front of me all the time. Well, we were talking about our favorite moments, and as Brian was saying, that is to, to see all of the, the components of learning line up, and then you see that, like, you can almost see the light bulb go on above their heads, and they go, oh, it's like a haze is removed from the entire fretboard <laughs> is the best way to describe it. And they go like, right. oh, this is here, and this is here. And uh, my favorite saying of Brian's is, you'll see most people play in the first three frets, but my favorite saying is, you paid for the entire fretboard, you might as well use it. Pupu e iho wa hime hana Honi ana ho ese kupoli For myself, you know, growing up in Hawaii, um, it was 
part of the family. You know, it's the ukulele is part of our culture. Actually, you know, it's 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 in our DNA. We we grew up with it. Um, it was born in Hawaii. Uh, 1879 is when the first Portuguese uh, sailors came, and they they adapted their Portuguese instrument, the machete, and then they developed the ukulele from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and it's just always around. You know, at celebrations, at parties, at funerals. So most people had ukuleles in their homes. So we just grew up with it pretty much. It's it's a worldwide instrument now, you know, which is great. With people like from Hawaii, like uh, Jake Shimabukuro, you know, he travels all over the world. And it helps all ukulele players um, spread that uh that aloha spirit, you know, wherever we go and wherever he goes. <laughs> Hainaia mai kapuana 